So yeah, adding a Radeon RX 7900 XTX to this mini PC allowed us to game in 4K and uh, it's performing way better than I thought it would. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at this modified mini PC that I recently put together. And basically what I did here was add the biggest, baddest AMD graphics card that I could get my hands on to my new favorite Ryzen 9 7940HS powered mini PC from Minis Forum known as the UM790. And this thing can definitely game. I mean, it's a full-fledged 4K gaming machine and we're definitely going to be taking a look at more. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is brought to you by URCD Keys. Now, I've actually been using this site for a long time now. They do offer PC games from Steam, Uplay, Ubisoft. They even offer Microsoft applications like Office. But the main reason that I use the site is for their Windows 10 Pro OEM keys. These are activation keys that you can pick up really cheap. And right now at checkout, if you use code ETA, you can get 30% off. And this 30% discount will be going on until the end of August. So with this discount, you can pick one of these Windows 10 Pro activation keys up for $15.58. And don't forget, you can use PayPal to check out on their website. I just did this build here. I need to activate Windows. I'm going to head over to my updates and security. We're going to go to activation. As you can see, I've got Windows 10 Pro, but it's not activated. So I'm going to change product key. I'm going to paste it in here. Choose next. Choose activate. And Windows is now activated. We're ready to go. My warning is totally gone, and basically that's it. They'll email your code once your payment is processed, and that's basically it. If you're interested in picking up cheap Windows 10 keys for your new PC builds, I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so jumping right back into it, as you can see, we've got an absolutely massive GPU connected to this mini PC, and we're not using Thunderbolt or USB 4 here because I do find it a bit lacking. It only runs at up to 40 gigs a second. What we're actually utilizing here is Oculink. So we've got an Oculink adapter connected to one of the PCIe X4 slots in the UM790 mini PC. And the dock that the 7900 XTX is in is something that I kind of just whipped up. So basically what we have here is the UM790 with the Ryzen 9 7940HS. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD, obviously paired up with the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. And this is the ASRock Tai Chi version. We've got 24 gigabytes of VRAM here, and the performance is absolutely amazing. And of course, when it comes to this GPU, it's definitely a high-end GPU, but the way we have it connected here is not the way we usually do it in a full-size PC, because we're actually just connected over Oculink using an M.2 adapter. And luckily, the UM790 actually has two PCIe X4 slots here for SSDs. So I just needed to remove one SSD and we can use that. And it's going to be running at X4 4.0 speeds. And the dock that I have here is something I whipped up with parts I had laying around. The base is actually a side panel from an old case that I wasn't using. I've got a 700 watt SFX power supply and we'll take a look at everything. But first up, the UM790. My favorite mini PC right now, this thing will run it up to 80 watts, and with just iGPU performance, it's a great little mini PC, but we can definitely get a lot more out of it by adding a DGPU. Now, it does have USB 4 up front, and you could use a Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 dock, but like I mentioned, those run it up to 40 gigs. Oculink can actually run it up to 63 gigs, which will give us much better performance, and in my experience, just a more stable connection. Now you're not going to be able to power your GPU over that M.2 Oculink connector, so you will need a PSU. I've got a 700 watt SFX power supply that I wasn't using, and I wanted to kind of keep the size down, so I went with SFX. It's fully modular, so I can add different cabling if I need it. And uh, the main thing here is actually this Oculink board. These are pretty cheap on Amazon. You can get a board, adapter, and the cable for under $40. And this is really kind of the main link when it comes to using an Oculink eGPU with your mini PC or handheld. I will leave links in the description to everything I'm using here with this build. I wouldn't run out and buy all of these to build a mini PC like this, but you can pick and choose. If you've already got some stuff laying around, these Oculink boards do come in really handy. But I really want to show you how this thing performs because it's pretty amazing. Alright, so here it is. Been up and running for a little while now. Got a bunch of games installed that we're going to be testing out. And overall, I mean, it's definitely a quick system. Surprised at how well this RX 7900 is working over a PCIe X4 4.0. Obviously, we should be running this over X16, but as you can see, we've got that 7940HS. 
We've still got access to the Radeon 780M iGPU, but we're not going to be using that. We're going to be utilizing this RX 7900 XTX with 24 gigabytes of VRAM. And just to give you a look here, since we are running over an M.2 slot, I'm going to open up GPU-Z. And I know it's a bit hard to see here, but I did want to show you that we are running at PCIe X4 4.0. If we were running this over Thunderbolt 4, or uh, USB 4 in this case, because we've got an AMD platform, we'd be running at PCIe X4 3.0, but that's not where the big performance gain comes in using M.2 or Oculink for your eGPU. It really comes down to the bandwidth, up to 63 gigs versus 40 with Thunderbolt 3 and Thunderbolt 4. And the first thing I wanted to give you a look at were some benchmarks that I ran on this unit. And the first one we have here is 3D Mark Night Raid coming in with a 72,389. And just to put this into perspective for you, on the built in Radeon 780M iGPU with the 7940HS at about 80 watts, this will score around 30,000. So we definitely got a nice hike in GPU performance here. Next, we've got Fire Strike coming in with a 46,583. And finally, Fire Strike with an incredible 24,190. And again, just on the built in iGPU with this mini PC, obviously with synthetics, we're getting a really nice boost here. But now it's time to move over to some real world gaming and see what this thing can do. Here we have Spider Man Miles Morales 4K, no FSR, no resolution scaling whatsoever going on here. And we're at very high settings, so we're maxed out at 4K with this. And I can get an average of around 128 FPS. Every once in a while, we do see kind of a dip under 100, but I'm not going to complain about it. This is actually performing much better than I thought it would. And this is one of those games that has always given me issues using Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 eGPU docks. But over M.2 or Oculink in this case, I've never had any kind of issues. And you know, I've tested this since it was released with Thunderbolt 3 docks. It's just something about the game. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. This one and a few others like God of War have always really given me a headache when I'm using a Thunderbolt eGPU. Next up, I wanted to run the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And uh, we're at very high, again, maxed out at 4K, no resolution scale, and we are using the DirectX 11 back in. By the end of this benchmark run, we had an average of 145 FPS with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, very high 4K. So again, really playable on this system. Another one I always like to test is Horizon Zero Dawn, and this game is actually really well optimized. I've had good luck on even just iGPUs in this game, but with this setup here, we can max it out. 4K Ultra Settings, we got an average of 115 FPS with this. I understand that this is an older game, but it's one that I personally still like to play. We've got Project Cars 2, and I kind of play it for the rally cross. We're at 4K maxed out here, so everything as high as we can set it. And I got an average of 184 FPS with this game by the end of my run here. And you know, when it comes to racing games, I personally don't mind locking it down at 60, but with something like this, seeing the kind of performance, we could go ahead and lock this at 120 FPS and have a really, really good time with it. So I mentioned that God of War was another one that's always given me issues with uh, USB 4, Thunderbolt 3, or Thunderbolt 4 eGPU. So I wanted to test it here with Oculink. And through everything that I've tested, even over M.2, I don't get the kind of stutters that we see using a Thunderbolt interface. Right now, we're at 4K ultra settings, no resolution scale, and we can get an average of 95 FPS. And the final game I wanted to test here was Cyberpunk 2077. When it comes to ray tracing, personally, over uh, Oculink, I haven't had really great luck because we are limited on that bandwidth. So with this, I'm not even going to try it, but I did want to show you the settings that I'm using right now. Uh, so if we head down here, we're at Ultra, preset of Ultra, no ray tracing, 4K, and we can get an average of 81 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 on this system. And of course, taking the resolution down with any of these games is going to give us even more performance. And the 7940HS CPU that we're using here isn't bottlenecking this card at all. Basically, the only bottleneck in this system here is the fact that we're running over PCIe X4. So 
so obviously we were able to significantly up the GPU performance on this mini PC by connecting this GPU to it, but it's definitely not going to be for everybody. The 7900 XTX is an expensive card, and with something like this, I would suggest kind of like an RTX 3060 or even a 3070, and both of those cards would perform great with a mini PC like this, and you can put something like this together pretty cheap, at least when it comes to the dock itself. As we saw over on Amazon, you can pick up the uh, Oculink for it itself, comes with the adapter and the cable for under $40, so if you've got a mini PC and an extra GPU laying around and you want to kind of put something together, you can do it in a weekend. It's a pretty fun little project, and I'll leave some links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in seeing something like an RTX 4090 connected to a mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.